Praise God. Is it time? My clock saying eleven fifty four twelve noon. We don't have a song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook family and friends and Temple of Faith of God church family. God bless y'all out there in Cyberland. I'd like to shout out to my church family that traveled to Houston this week to see the, their baby and uh, their, their siblings. I uh, hope they make it, made it there and had a good time. And I hope they have a safe trip back. That's the Wimbish family. Praise God. Very faithful to the church. God bless y'all. I hope y'all had a good 4th of July. I guess we wasn't supposed to celebrate that this year. But uh, we're still in this country. We still are Americans. Praise God. Um, I still like to shout out to the people that are fighting on the, in, the, in the, the streets for justice. Justice is what Jesus was all about. Bringing justice to this earth realm. Man has let the devil, the enemy, come to kill, steal, and to destroy but he came to give us life and that more abundantly. And everybody should be a, awarded the opportunity to reap this abundant life in this country. And you can through Jesus Christ, that's for sure. But we need to meter out justice in this earth realm as well. That's what we do. We fight for justice for those that are least among us. We can be their mouthpiece and their strength. And we see injustice to on anybody. I don't care what race, creed, or color you are. That's our mandate. Justice. If you remember, he said, take care of the widows and the orphans. And the poor among you, justice, the unjust balance being balanced. We're fighting for the balance of the scales. That the injustice will be metered, justice will be metered out across the board. He is no respect of person. We should be no respect of persons. We all deserve the same justice. There's nobody higher than anybody, although we do have hierarchy in this earth realm. But the same laws should apply to everyone. Praise God. I got that off my chest. And, and shout out to Black Lives Matter. Keep on keeping on. You got people in your own race that's denigrating you stabbing you in the back, trying to derail what you're doing. The last bastion of the Confederate flags flying over state houses has came down this week, and we ought to thank them for that. Although it just seems like it's a small matter, but it's the little foxes that destroys the vine. We must be mindful of that. This is a battle. It's been waged as long as my people have been coming out, out, came out of slavery. This battle continues. And it probably will continue when my great-grandchildren 
to reach a, reach the age to be able to join this battle. We might be fighting this battle until we all go on or get raptured because Satan comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Just don't, don't believe that. Don't believe that he's going to stop what he's doing. And it ain't nothing but a test. God is we, not his people. Let's go to the scriptures, praise God. Let me get off my soapbox. Personal discipleship. Personal. This is a personal thing. You have to want it. You have to have this hunger and thirst after righteousness whereby you got, you will be fed. That's what the scriptures tell us in the fifth chapter, the Beatitudes. Five and six, if I'm not mistaken. Matthew five and six. Uh, personal discipleship, Matthews eleven twenty five and two thirty, and it reads: At that time, Jesus answered and said, "I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and has revealed them." Unto babes. Praise God. Powerful stuff right there. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burdens is light. Say it again. John 6 is, well, no, 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 not John 6. But in the book of John, the thief come to kill, steal, and to destroy our lives personally, each and every one of us. And if you're not serving God, he's, he, he got you. You you following his ways and you doing his tactics. You are doing the things that are not pleasing to God. He's he's not on you like someone that is trying to walk this straight and narrow road. The enemy is on those that are trying to be Christ like and uh, demonstrate his love. Being Jesus and this demonstrating his love. Those that are walking in, the, in the, uh, the spirit of God, that's who the enemy wants. That's who he fights. But the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And that more abundantly. He's come to show us the way. He has patriots. He is so great a cloud of witnesses in the book of uh, Hebrews, and it names them. It, it, it points them out, all the witnesses in the Bible. I think it's the 12th chapter where he start go through the Old Testament all the way through to the New Testament about the, uh, the well, the, 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 the New Testament is uh, the, the disciples and who they traveled with. But we got so great a cloud of witness, not only that, we have Jesus. And he said, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. And so it's going to be some suffering, saints. It's a test. Ask Job. Go through the test. John 6. Is that John 6? 
No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. If he continue to the end, we have to come to Jesus. We can't come through Jesus unless the Father draws us. Many are called, but few are chosen. You want to know why you don't have this hunger and the thirst after your righteousness? Because God has not chosen you. And if he did, he if he chose you, you, you rejected him. It said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I'm speaking from the article of God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your humble people to preach your word. We hide behind this cross, and we ask that you speak through me to them. And Father God, we ask that you give them ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. And give them this hunger and thirst after your righteousness whereby they might be filled. And that they will flee the devil and the wiles of the devil, and he will flee from them. If they flee from me, if they resist the devil, they will he will flee from them. And Father God, when the word goes forth with power, somebody might ask, What must they do to be saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free? I was you should be anxious for nothing. I woke up this morning and man, this word started coming to me. It started coming to me. I was all over the page and I got so much stuff written down out on and did the sermon on yesterday that I had to go back and look stuff up to add to. But uh, let's, let's get back. Let's exegete. Let's start at 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. I had to go look up the word prudent. Those are the ones that look for tomorrow. They, they're storing up for the day for tomorrow. They always, he said, see, uh, don't worry about what you shall put on, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink. For the Lord will take care of those things. So don't look for tomorrow. Don't 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 just worry about the things of the now, the the things that you can do for Christ, the things that Christ wants you to do for today. Don't don't take no thought for it's been the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the the lilies of the field, all of them have need of and wants. And the Lord take care of those things. He will take care of the things of you, you, you that you do that you need. He will take care of them for you. It's the 633. Seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Job had to go through some mess for a test and what did he get he got everything back he had eight kids he got eight more kids he he replenished he got a hundredfold return all the cattle and the, the, the sheep and the, the goats and everything that was taken away from him was restored a hundredfold he he shall receive. Mark 10 and 30 said, uh, he told the disciples, he said, y'all, uh, the disciples said, we done left everything for you. We done left houses. We done left, uh, Jesus told them they had to leave houses. They had to leave wives, children, and if you love anything more than me, you love your wife more than me, you love your children more than me, you lo love anything more than me, you cannot be the, my disciples. And they looked at him and said, we left everything for you. And he said, if you left everything for me, don't worry. You will get a hundredfold return in this life and eternal life in the world to come. That's Mark 10 and 30. That's what he told them. And that's what he will do. 
Jesus, these are precious promises that he promised to his children that you will gain all of that and then some. And don't forget, eternal life in the world to come. This life ain't nothing but a vapor. It'll soon be gone. And we're talking about the COVID-19. It's wreaking havoc now. But y'all ain't seen what was going, what's coming around the corner. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And behind that is something else. And it's going to continue to be something else. But Psalm 91 says, thousand will fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it won't come down under me. But to exegete the scripture, because God has hid these things from the wise and the prudent. 1 Corinthians 3.19 For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. They think they're so smart and they so wise. It's foolishness with God. You can see it out there. If you get into this light, if you start walking in the spirit, if you start uh, Believing in, in, in the, this, this word of God. If you start walking this word of God, you'll see how from the top, from the White House to the Congress and all the rules in the, the city government, how unwise and how unjust they are to, to people. It's a fixed system. This capitalistic system is fixed. Yes, they make rules and regulation that the rich will stay richer and the poor will stay right there where they are. And we have to fight that at every turn. That's the power. He gave us the whatever we bound. He gave us the keys to the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of heaven is the same. We, we, we bound on earth shall be bound in the heavenlies. What we loose on earth shall be loosed in the heavenlies. Now don't think, think that we'll overtake the White House or nothing like that. But we'll be able to meter out the, the rules and the regulations that they, they be, be putting in place. That. Oklahoma set up and, and uh, voted in Medicaid expense. Wow. whole bunch of poor folks will be able to get their health care, access to health care. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a blessing. Texas is still lagging. But they tell you that pro-life people... <laughs> And we'll, we'll go on, keep on. Because thou has hid these things. These are hid. Remember in the 13th chapter of Matthew, when the, the, this was the first parable Jesus ever spoke. And he told them, he said, they have eyes and they cannot see and ears and they cannot hear. Least they hear and see and be converted. And I thought that was profound. What he mean? He's hidden these things from these people so they won't manipulate the scriptures like they do in a bunch of these churches. These wisdom people, these wise folks, these prudent people for to get gain, to manipulate God's people. They say, told the Pharisees, you won't enter into the kingdom and you hinder those that are trying to get in. This kingdom of God is not in me to drink. This is Romans 14 and 17. It's not in me to drink. It's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, man, serious. Uh, as always listening in on my conversation and want to answer a question for me. But the Romans 14 and 17, it, it's not in me to drink. Remember Nicodemus? Jesus answered and said unto him, John 3 and 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, 
except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He can't enter in. Man, this thing is spiritual. The, the disciples did not get it. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, they still were trying to understand. They said, you, you just said that scripture. Would you break it down to us? Jesus had to break it down to them in the 13th chapter of Matthew. Some fell by the wayside. Some fell on stony ground. Some fell among thorns. And some fell in the good ground. The, the seed that he was talking about was the word of God. And that's our personal discipleship. We got to get in this word. Study to show yourself, approve, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. That's the only way you're going to get it. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Other man, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That's what these wise and prudent will do. They will not. They'll take this word and try to manipulate the, the, the good game. But that's why he hid it from them. But he has revealed it under babes. Why? Remember he said you got to come humble as a little child. You have to deny yourself. You got to pick up the cross and you got to follow him. Deny who? Deny Lewis. Lewis and all his aspirations and his evil thoughts. Man, is evil continuously in the book of Genesis, he said. Man, he is evil continuously. Look at the world. Look at man. Look what they do. And they like to kill, steal, and to destroy because they got the enemy in control of this, their self. I used to have the enemy in control of me. I remember time. I used to get drunk out beyond recognition, you know, and do all manner of stuff. Sin separates me from God. It's, it's just a proven thing. That's why he come and hung, bled, and died at the, on the cross that our sins might be forgiven. To bring us back to the garden before the fall. Before Eve offered the, the fruit to Adam. He's trying to get you there. It's about love. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul, and thy neighbor as thyself. Man, <laughs> I want to get off on another subject. Let me stay too close to the breath. Okay, he uh, he revealed it under babes. You got to come humble. You got to deny yourself. You got to pick up the cross. The cross is suffering. You go go through some 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 rheumatoid arthritis. You're gonna go through some pain and some suffering. But guess what? You'll be just like Joseph. You'll be less just like Job. He'll be there. Just be just like David, patriarch. Be just like Paul. He said, by grace is sufficient. Oh. Then, then they went all the way to the, he, Paul went all the way to the cross. Peter went all the way to the cross. John on the island of Patmos. These are great clouds of witnesses that came before us that went through some stuff. Praise God. We're going to go through some stuff. Stiff, 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 keep a stiff upper lip, as the British would say. And just know that the keys of the kingdom is in your hand if you're following this word. You got to be following this word. You can't deviate from this word. God is a man that he should not lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He wants you to repent. Anytime you deviate from this word. And the love of many have waxed cold in this hour. People think they're doing God's service. No, they're they worried about their own selfish act. No, you're not supposed to worry about you and your selfish act. You're not selfish anymore. You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you might prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. 
Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're all about your father's business now. This that we are going through, don't lose sight of your walk with Christ, being Jesus and demonstrating his love. We love everybody. Don't forget that. Don't let your love be waxed cold in this hour. It's the last days, 24th chapter of Matthew. That's where it say, 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. It, say, it, say, it seemed good what you just did. What you're doing to them. That you're the wise and the prudent. You ain't giving you giving it to the babes. Those that have humbled themselves. And have denied themselves. All things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. In the beginning, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the 14th verse, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God is trying to reveal himself through his son, Jesus. Remember, uh, Hosanna, God, uh, wow. God with us. He came in the form of flesh of Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. Word who? That's Jesus, right? Because the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's the Word. God is in him, and he in us, and us, we are in the Father. We're all one now. Now we do the things of the Father like Jesus did. Jesus said, but uh, the things that I come to do, I ain't come to do of my own. I come to do what the Father wants me to do. And that's what we supposed to be about our Father's business, like Jesus. Being Jesus and demonstrating his love. Personal discipleship. We wants to be his disciple. He said, how can you be my disciple if you have not love one for another? I will they know that. That you are my disciple because of the love that you have one for another. We fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, rulers of darkness. And remember, Jesus told us how to fight when he got his anointing wing and went into the, 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 the wilderness for and fasted 40 days. What did he do when the devil came at him? He came and denounced him with the word. A man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God is revealing himself to you through Jesus, which is the word of God. So you can walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because that's all the devil want to get you out of the spirit in the flesh. So he can manipulate you to do whatever he wants to. 28. Come unto me all ye that are labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Boy if you go to the, the third, fourth and fifth chapter of Hebrews. It tells you about this rest. He said the children of Israel could not enter into this seventh day rest that he had gave them to try to get them ready and, and groomed for when my son died on the cross and we believe in him and we, we become children of him that we enter into his rest. Once you become a believer in Jesus, you enter into the seventh day rest that he would talk about. Now we can rest from our labor because he's going to do the word. We don't have to fight his hard. We just speak the word and the enemy will flee. We resist 
the enemy and he will flee. We have the keys to the kingdom. Whatever we bound on earth shall be bound in the heavenly. What we loose on earth shall be loosed in the heavenly. What we say, Ruth, we, we, we can call those things that be not as though they were. Romans uh, 23 and 7. We can call those things. I heard something that was so profound yesterday watching the news. It said, uh, Albert Einstein said, quoted, uh, that something was better than knowledge. That, uh, wow, why did he put that? He said, uh, "Persons, uh, uh, what you, what you, uh, what he said? How did he say it? Well, I, I, I let this slip my mind. I'll come back to it. Take my yoke, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest." unto your souls. Once we become believers in Jesus Christ, go read third, fourth, and fifth chapter, and it tells you, breaks it down, how you become into the, because ours is mixed with faith. They could not believe because they were unbelievers. That's why they had to walk 40 years into the wilderness to die off not to see the promised land because they didn't mix it with faith. We mix this word with faith. And that's how we that's, that's how we got it made. That's how we enter in God's rest because he will take care of us. Like he took care of the lilies of the field, the fowl of the earth, the, 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 every creeping thing that he got their food supply intact. Now man is coming along and he's blowing it up like uh, we had dominion over all of this. And we let the devil talk us into blowing it up. And but if my people that are called by my name, 714, Second Chronicles 714, if my people that are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive them of their sins and I will heal the land with time. And time. Oh, okay, right on time. We got to, we got to stay close to this word. We got to humble. We got to pray. We got to seek his faith. We got to turn from our wickedness. We got to keep looking in the mirror 24-7, 365. Praise God. Intelligence. Mm -mm. No, no, no. It, uh, It, it, it goes with uh, visions and things. Wow. Okay, thanks for that word. For my yoke is easy. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me, 29. Take, take the yoke. The yoke. What is the yoke? You know what the yoke is and what they put on the, the, the uh, animals out there so they wouldn't get distracted. Got a yoke on them, it's two of them, and they won't get distracted. They'll stay in a straight line, at that straight and narrow road. That yoke does hold them together so they won't go this way or that way. They'll stay on that straight and narrow. That yoke, take my yoke upon of me, upon you, and learn of me. Learn of me. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Learn this word. You got to get in this word. You got to get this Sunday school. You got to get the Sunday school lesson about wisdom. You got to be that being taught the wisdom of God. The wisdom of this world we just read. It was foolishness with God. 
<clears throat> Praise God. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Imaginations. Imagination. That's where it is. Let me go back to let me go back to you, uh, uh, Einstein. Say imaginations are uh, more important than knowledge. And man, my Holy Ghost got to rest in me. And, man, he can't be Einstein's smartest man of no way. Yeah, that's that wisdom of this world. And the Holy Ghost said, no, she said, check it out. Say, okay, the Lord give me some scriptures on that. Habakkuk 2 and 2. It said, uh, write the vision. Imagination, that's something that comes you conjure up in your mind, ain't it? Huh? Imagination. He said, write the vision and make it plain. Wow, that's imagination. As a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23 and 7. A. Hey, as a man thinketh, so is he. All things that are possible speak. Those things that be not as though they are. Imaginations. Man, it's, it was so profound that it was true. According to scripture, all scripture bear out. I got four scriptures. There's, there's three scriptures. Write the vision, make it plain about, about the two and two. Romans 4 and 17 B. He called it those things that be not as though they are. And um, as a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23 and 7. All of those. Man. Wow. We don't accomplish anything unless we see it far off. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What? The substance. What's the substance? Faith is the substance of what what I'm hoping for. I can't see it with these natural eyes. I can see it in the spirit realm, can't I? Imagination is being able to see in the spirit realm, right? Or far off. Same thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's not made it here yet. But I'm hoping for it. So that's in my mind. Imaginations, poo, is better than knowledge. And this is supposed to have been the most knowledgeable person on the planet, right? <laughs> Praise God. And I thought that was a profile, and it was true. Yeah. Yes. 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 For my yoke is easy, and let's wrap it on up. For, 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 let me see, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. Don't forget that. Man, that's my problem. I need to tune it down. I, I, my meekness comes into suspect sometimes because I'm, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive and I need to be more meek. And ye shall find rest into your, in your souls. You'll find rest in Jesus. Your rest is in Jesus. Your worry is gone. My worries are gone. But I used to worry every day. I, where am I get my drugs at? And where am I get me a piece at? And where am I get my drunk on at? Uh, man, worry about some stuff like that. Some stupid stuff like that, right? Yeah, used to worry myself to death on that. Yeah, so praise God. But I don't have to worry about none of that. Get up and I, I, how I'm going to bless my wife today just by being a light, just by being, I would say, loving her with all, loving her like Christ loved the church because she is my Ruth. And I'm her boy. 
and praise God. We go through the day. We tease each other. He said, people are talking about they having cabin fever. We got this big house. It ain't just us and the son, and he fixing to move out. And now we're going to have the whole up. He had the whole upstairs to his cell. And people are crying, said people are committing suicide and, and wife beating and and they going into alcohol and drugs more and all of this because they cooped up. And said, me and my wife said, well, we, <laughs> we ain't got that problem. We never had. We've been cooped. We've been cooped up for, for, for nine years. Huh? <laughs> so we don't go nowhere anyway. Only oh, place we used to go is church, and that's gone. And uh, it, ain't, it ain't bothered us, but I do, do miss the church house. I praise God. And I hope we get back to it. But the saints, this is a tribulation. And we have to be mindful. People supposed to be gravitating to this guy up here in the White House. He got these people. Man, don't even worry about their fellow brothers no more. They don't care if they catch it and give it to you. But a lot of them don't believe it. People dying around them every day. And I don't know, understand the stats bear witness. It ain't no flu. But... That's bringing it on home 30. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. God will be with you every step of the way when the enemy, he will never put on us more than we can bear. This arthritis, and I, Lord, I know, wait a minute, Lord, I ain't able to bear this. And he go to go to Paul. Paul kept on there. Paul, uh, what did he say? I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous shall judge shall give me at his return. And not to me only, but to all of y'all that love his appearing. That's in Timothy, fourth chapter. Paul, you got to endure to the end. And saints, you're going to have a breath with no more crying, no more pain, and no more suffering. And where will you get to meet Mama and Mimi and Mama and Dad, brothers and sisters? Praise God. And if anybody don't know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, boy, if times ain't getting... Well, it's, it's time to flood the the the, uh, the church houses. If not, it's time to get in the word. Flood the word. Flood the song. You got to get the word. You got to hear his voice. And his voice is in his word. Faith coming by hearing. He's trying to enter you into his rest. And the rest of God is lovely. You're in the light. You can see clearly. If you don't believe that Jesus, if you, if you do believe that Jesus died on the cross, all you have to do is repent. Lord, forgive me. It's time to come in. It's time to give myself to you, Lord. Deny myself. Pick up your cross. I'm willing to pick up your cross. And I'm willing to follow you. If you, you repent, and believe that he died on the cross. And on the third day he arose that you might partake of the tree of life. You. He give you access to eternal life. If you believe that. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Thou shalt be saved. Now you need a Bible believing church. That will teach you Sunday school. And the Bible study and the preach word and prayer. Man, I can't stress the importance of prayer. Man should not, should always pray and not fight. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. 
got to go to Pentecost. And to go to Pentecost, you have to sit up there and face God wherever you at. And tell him, Lord, I'm willing to deny everything for you. Everything. I will put myself on the cross. Deny myself, pick up the cross, and follow you. And it's all about him. And you, if you believe that, he knows your heart. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. He will give you the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And that's your power. Keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bound on earth shall be bound. Personal. It's personal. Nobody can go to heaven for you. You can't go to heaven for anybody else. It's a personal thing. And it's trying to be Jesus. Being Jesus and demonstrating his love. Personal discipleship. And if anybody don't have a church home, temple of faith of God, we, uh, Denison, Texas, Holiday Inn, and uh, this is the place to be loved, uplifted, and taught in Jesus' mighty name. And if you want to pay any tithes, if anybody loved this sermon, or love the teachings of Jesus Christ, Chase Bank, Temple of Faith of God, you can throw a check straight at them, and uh, they'll receive it for us, and God will bless you for the, the, the more. And uh, all minds are clear, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word, that it went forth with power. And somebody's ears were pricked, and they heard this word, and they want to know what they must do to be saved. And we just explained it to them. And uh, let the sweet communion of the precious Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide until we meet again at this precious time in your Son Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord. And amen and amen. Next Sunday, 12 noon, if God say the same, and y'all have a blessed rest of your weekend, and have a blessed week. Thank you.